This presentation on Pearson's square calculations is part of a workshop that was presented in St. Kitts and Nevis during February 2016. Financial support for this workshop from the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, IECA, is gratefully acknowledged. I would personally like to thank Mr. Augustine Merchant, IECA representative in St. Kitts and Nevis, and the IECA staff for their considerable efforts in making this workshop possible. We will begin with a brief introduction followed by instructions on how to use Pearson's Square, then a sample calculation and a comparison using basic calculations. After this we will look at calculation number two, calculation number three, and wrap up with a brief summary. When making juice-based beverages, there are frequently times when you need to do dilutions from one concentration of sugar to another, or you may need to make adjustments to a beverage mixture to bring the sugar concentration into specification. To determine how much of each component to mix, you can do a series of calculations, or you can use a convenient shortcut method. This shortcut method is called Pearson's Square. Let's take a look at a sample calculation. We're going to suppose that we have orange juice concentrate with 65% solids by weight. These solids are predominantly sugars. We want to make a 10% solids product from this concentrate. The question then becomes how much concentrate and how much water should be mixed together to get the desired 10% solids in the final mixture. Before we go any further, we will take a look at using Pearson's square. Then we can come back to this problem. As its name implies, Pearson's square is based on a square or a rectangle. You need to set up the square as shown in the next slide. So draw a square or a rectangle and then label the left side solutions as I have indicated here. You can then label the right hand side as parts. We will discuss the meaning of this in a moment. Then label the center of it target. Now you can begin adding values to Pearson square. The starting solutions are A and B and they will go in the positions here on the left hand side of the rectangle as A and B. Then we can put in the target value in the middle of the rectangle and we'll call that C. Next we will add in parts D and E on the right hand side of the rectangle or square. We can draw arrows across the two diagonals from A to E and from B to D. This will allow us to solve for D and E. D is going to be equal to the value of B minus the value of C. E will be equal to A minus C except this will give us a negative number because C is usually going to be larger than A. So in order to get a positive number we will subtract C minus A. These are the parts by weight since the concentrations of the sugar solutions are based on weight, as they usually are. You can blend the required number of parts of A, which is the value given by D, with the required number of parts of B, which is given by the value E in the diagram. Or you can find the percentages by weight of each solution. The total number of parts will be D plus E, and the percentage of solution A by weight will be D divided by the total times 100%, and the percentage of solution B will be E divided by the total times 100%. Now we can recall the original problem. We have orange juice concentrate with 65% solids by weight and we want to make a 10% solids product from this concentrate. How much concentrate and water are required for this task? We will begin by drawing Pearson's square, which I have elongated slightly into a rectangle. We'll insert the starting and target values. 
We'll add water, which has 0% solids, and concentrate, which has 65% solids. The target value is going to be 10%. Then we can solve for D and E. D will equal 65 minus 10, which is 55. And notice that we don't put the percent signs in here. The value for E will be given by 10% minus 0, which is 10. We now know that we should mix 55 parts of water with 10 parts of concentrate to get a 10% final concentration. What if we want to make 150 kilograms of the mixture and we have to note that these parts are by weight? So we take the total number of parts, which is 55 parts water, plus 10 parts concentrate, equaling 65 parts, which gives us the percentage of water as being 55 parts of water over 65 parts total times 100% or 84.6% water. The percent concentrate is given by taking the 10 parts concentrate, dividing by 65 parts in total times 100%, which is 15.4%. Or you could have subtracted the 84.6% water from 100% to get 15.4% concentrate. Either way is equally acceptable. We now want to make 150 kilograms of product. So the weight of water will be 150 kilograms times the percent water expressed as a decimal which is 0.846, which gives us 126.9 kilograms of water. The weight of the concentrate will be 150 kilograms times the percentage of concentrate as a decimal fraction, which is 0.154, and that equals 23.1 kilograms of the concentrate. Errors will result if we mix the parts by volume instead of by weight, so please be careful here. Now we're going to use the basic calculation method, which you may choose to ignore or you may want to fast forward and go to example number two at this time. However, for 150 kilograms, we want 150 kilograms of final beverage at 10% solids using a mixture of water and 65% juice concentrate. Since the solids are coming only from the concentrate, we will let the weight of the concentrate be x kilograms. So we're actually using an algebraic approach here. The weight of the solids in the final beverage will equal 150 kilograms times 10 percent as a decimal fraction which gives us 15 kilograms of solids. This means we need to find how much concentrate will give us 15 kilograms of solids. The weight of the concentrate is equal to x. So the solids in the concentrate will be 15 kilograms, which is equal to 65% of X, because there were 65% solids in the concentrate, and the weight of the concentrate is X kilograms. Solving for X, we find that X is equal to 15.0 kilograms divided by 0.65, which is 23.1 kilograms. The weight of the water will be equal to 150 kilograms total weight minus 23.1 kilograms of concentrate or 126.9 kilograms of water. This basic method gives us the same result as Pearson's square method. You can be the judge of which method you would like to use. In sample calculation number two, we have 175 kilograms of juice at 14.7% sugar. The sugar content should have been 12.5% by weight. The question now is, how much water should you add to reduce the sugar level to 12.5% by weight? So we're going to draw Pearson's square. We've got the labels here saying solutions, target, and parts, and we will insert the starting and target values. We have water at 0%. We have the beverage at 14.7%. Our target is 12.5% sugar or solids. 
Now we will solve for D and E. D will be equal to 14.7 minus 12.5, which is 2.2. E will be equal to 12.5 minus 0, which is 12.5. The 175 kilograms of the beverage that we have at 14.7% solids accounts for the 12.5 parts of the beverage. So one part of the beverage will be equal to 175 kilograms divided by 12.5 parts, so we know that one part will equal 14.0 kilograms, or 14 kilograms per part. But we've got 2.2 parts of water that we need, so 2.2 parts times 14 kilograms per part will give us 30.8 kilograms of water that we need for the dilution. Therefore, you need to mix 175 kilograms of the off-strength beverage with 30.8 kilograms of water to reach the target value of 12.5% solids. This means that you will end up with 205.8 kilograms of juice. To convert this to a volume, you need to know its density, and we're not going to go into that in this presentation. In sample calculation number three, we have 225 kilograms of a beverage at 9.7% sugar. However, the sugar value is too low. The sugar content should be 13.2% by weight. So we want to know how much dry sugar should be added to increase the sugar level to 13.2%. Once again, we will draw this rectangle and label the solutions, the targets, and the parts. We will begin by inserting the starting and target values. We have a beverage at 9.7% solids, and we have dry sugar with 100% solids present. The target is 13.2% solids. We can calculate the values of D and E in a manner that we used in the past two examples. So the value of D will be 100 minus 13.2 which is 86.8. The value of E will be equal to 13.2 minus 9.7, which equals 3.5. So these are the parts of each component by weight. The 225 kilograms of the juice at 9.7% solids accounts for the 86.8 parts of the beverage. So one part of the beverage is 225 kilograms divided by 86.8 parts, which equals 2.59 kilograms per part. Now we need 3.5 parts of sugar, so that's going to be equal to 3.5 parts of sugar times 2.59 kilograms for each part, which means that we need to add 9.07 kilograms of dry sugar crystals. Therefore, you need to mix the 225 kilograms of off-strength beverage with 9.07 kilograms of dry sugar to reach the target of 13.2% solids. You will end up with 238.2 kilograms of juice beverage and you will need to have its density value to convert it to a volume. But once again, that is outside of the scope of this presentation. So in summary, Pearson Square is a useful tool for calculating the amounts of two components to mix together to get a desired final concentration. You may prefer to use a mass balance approach, which I showed in the basic calculations, where you calculate the weights of each of the components required from the basic principles. Thank you very much.